this is the note. Paul sent this. Sawyer Robertson, uh, the Baylor offense, there's no question. There's frustration. Who knows? Craig, of course, Monday really kind of summed up the feeling of most everybody. And others have done that, whether it's on Twitter or whether it's uh, in message boards or even on this show and other particular shows. That they, uh, they, man, people are just, they want to win. They just want to win a game. I say we as in Baylor wants to win a game. Uh, Sawyer Robertson has been a bright spot. Now, he threw the deadly pick at the end of the game when they still had a chance to maybe pull that game off. But the second highest QBR rating in the Big 12 at 83-3. We know some of the quarterbacks even not have enough games or snaps or some aren't playing at the level. But that's, he has played well. Since he took over for Daquan Finn. Yeah, look, they, they don't they don't have a problem at quarterback right now, which is something they did have for a couple of years. They like Sorry Roberts is playing well, which highlights the fact that they're not doing the little things that they need to do to win games that if you've got the second highest uh, QB rating in the Big Twelve right now, you're squandering a good thing, clearly. Mm-hmm. And that's that to me, while that's a good thing, that's the sign of trouble to me that you have a guy at the most important position, who's actually doing well, but it doesn't matter because you're doing a lot of other things poorly. Yeah, he's been really solid. I you know, don't want to get too ahead of ourselves, but he's been certainly the least of their problems. I think when the defense has played well, that's when they're you know really showcasing their best. But I think right behind that is Sawyer Robertson's play. There's no running backs that pop off the page. Uh, because Bryson Washington hasn't been able to really hit a stride, and none of the others have have come close to, to getting any type of a rhythm or, or impact on a consistent basis. The receivers, there's guys that poke their heads up every once in a while, but none of them are consistent. The tight ends are a non-factor. Um, so you look at over the defensive side, and as a collective, there's things to like there. Um, but, yeah, it's the defense. Not in the first quarter against BYU, though. Um but, you know, for the rest of that game, basically, and Sawyer Robertson is, is what kept you in that. And then, you know, various other guys making plays at, at certain times. But uh, they don't have a lot of star power. He's probably as close as they come to that. Having said that, uh, those are two really bad picks last week. I mean, the slow motion one, look, it's slow motion, so I'm not putting too much stock in that because, yeah, it's easy for me to see slow motion. But when you look at, like, the wall of arm that he was throwing directly into. I know it's bang, bang, but it's like, dang, how'd you not see that? Okay, whatever. It was very quick, and and I'm certainly not capable of making that decision, so that's going to happen. You're going to get a ball batted down, but it was like not even close where you were throwing the ball. Like, it had no chance to go past the guy. So, anyways, fine. Let's just chalk that up to bang, bang, and it happened. Well, then what happened on the second interception – Technically, it was his fault, but it was a great call by BYU, apparently, that they had called something that they had never called uh, in the course of that game until that point. They had one of their assistants who just had a really good idea and had seen what Baylor was doing and thought that this particular call would be a way to seal this game. And sure enough, they have the defensive back you know, show a different look, and he goes over there when Sawyer's, I guess, not seeing him or expecting him and basically throws it right to him. Um, and clearly did not see him, that's for sure, and that ends the game right there. So he got fooled. Um, The offense got fooled on that. Those are the types of things that hopefully get better with more experience. But, yeah, those two plays were, you know, especially that second one, the the crux of that game and and why you, you know, ultimately weren't able to try and finish and get a big win at home. So areas for improvement, but he's been really, really good. If you wanted to give – and you could list off 10 or 12 things, but what are the top three problems? If you were to say fix this, this, and this. Offensive line, offensive line, offensive line, offensive line, offensive line. I'll put it in, in uh, I'll say guard, tackle, and center. Yeah, that's better. <laughs> yeah, that that's the three but biggest. In no particular given, order. Haven't they pass protected pretty well? I mean, I guess. It's not even about but, pass protection. It's about the fact you can't run the football no, at yeah, all. I, I, I'm and, not. It makes you so one-dimensional. Not disagreeing with the offensive line, I'm just saying, but they have seemed that's one thing they've done better, but you can't run the ball. Yeah, yeah. Like, so, so it's like it's great. You can do one thing, but it doesn't add up to anything good ultimately because you can't do the other thing. So, yeah, I mean, if we're looking to put a spin on it and say, like, they've been really good at this. They've been okay to good, I guess, at pass blocking. A lot of good has done them. Yeah. You know, I mean, what what good has it done in Big 12 play? Not, not one iota, so – uh, yeah, good luck. Yeah, I, h- I hope you are good at pass blocking because that's all you're going to probably be doing this weekend because you're probably not going to be able to run the ball again. 
And so it's going to be all about passing. So, you know, that puts more stress on Sawyer Robertson to have to make throws because he's got to basically feel like he's doing it all himself sometimes uh, because they don't have a rushing attack that can carry its own weight right now. So, uh, yeah, I think the biggest problems are on the O-line, and I don't – they don't have a, an alpha at wide receiver. They've got a couple guys who I think can sniff that air, but they're not consistently good enough to be that dude. If you had Ketron Jackson actually turn into that guy, which he's clearly not going to at this stage in his career, that's fine. He just he has the, the tools for it, but he's just not that guy, it seems like, uh, mentally or emotionally or physically. Um, you know, then you could have him – dressed up with a Monterey Baldwin and Ashton Hawkins, and that'd be a pretty damn good wide receiver core. But they don't have, like, the big receiver, you know, that's going to go yep. get the jump ball. And and they try to go to catch on in those situations, and it's either always incomplete or he draws a penalty, and that's that's cool. But when you can't punch it in the end zone, like, you need those guys to make those catches in those moments. And so, um, yeah, I mean, I think you could be better there. You could be better in some places. But certainly, if you're starting, yeah, center guard tackle, that's where you would like to be better on this football team. You guys know how I now have become Mr. T Statistic and Trends and Analytics. Baylor is actually ranked 72nd in the country in sacks allowed. So, uh, not bad out of 131. I, it's it's uh, so, still in too the many. middle. That's, it, it may be a little bit past the middle, but yeah. I, was, I just wanted to make sure I had evidence and, uh, again, like in Shadour's case, Colorado had eight in one game, and then all of a sudden they've kind of tightened that up a little bit.